Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Monday, June 1st, the first Monday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed, and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Our Old Testament reading today is from the book of Numbers, chapter 22, beginning in verse 1. Then the people of Israel set out and camped in the plains of Moab, beyond the Jordan at Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was in great dread of the people, because they were many. Moab was overcome with fear of the people of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, This horde will now lick up all that is around us, as the ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, the son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor at Pethor, which is near the river in the land of the people of Ammah, to call him, saying, Behold, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the earth, and they are dwelling opposite me. Come now, curse this people for me, since they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land, for I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the fees for divination in their hand. And they came to Balaam and gave him Balak's message. And they said to them, Lodge here tonight, and I will bring back word to you as the Lord speaks to me. So the princes of Moab stayed with Balaam. And God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, is sent to me, saying, Behold, a people has come out of Egypt, and it covers the face of the earth. Now come, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to fight against them and drive them out. God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them, you shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, Go to your own land, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the princes of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Once again Balak sent princes more in number and more honorable than these. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing hinder you from coming to me, for I will surely do you great honor, and whatever you say to me I will do. Come, curse this people for me. But Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the command of the Lord my God to do less or more. So you too, please stay here tonight that I may know more what the Lord will say to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, rise, go with them, but only do what I tell you. And we'll hear more of that story tomorrow. And our writing today is from the Augsburg Confession, Article 24. And it says, Scripture teaches that we are justified before God through faith in Christ when we believe that our sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. Now, if the Mass takes away the sins of the living and the dead simply by performing it, Justification comes by doing masses and not of faith. Scripture does not allow this. 
But Christ commands us, do this in remembrance of me, Luke 22:19. Therefore the Mass was instituted so that those who use the sacrament should remember, in faith, the benefits they received through Christ, and how their anxious consciences are cheered and comforted. To remember Christ is to remember his benefits. It means to realize that they are truly offered to us. It is not enough only to remember history. The Jewish people and the ungodly also remember this. Therefore, the Mass is to be used for administering the sacrament to those who need consolation. Ambrose says, Because I always sin, I always need to take the medicine. Because the Mass is for the purpose of giving the sacrament, we have communion every holy day. And if anyone desires the sacrament, we also offer it on other days, when it is given to all who ask for it. This custom is not new in the Church. Chrysostom says that the priest stands daily at the altar, inviting some to the communion and keeping back others. It appears from the ancient council decisions that one person celebrated the Mass, from whom all the other presbyters and deacons received the body of the Lord. The records of the decisions of the Council of Nicaea state, Let the deacons, according to their order, receive the Holy Communion after the presbyters, from the bishop or from a presbyter. Paul in 1 Corinthians 11.33 has this command in regard to communion, wait for one another, so that there may be a common participation. And there's one of the places in our confessions that does say that we ought to be uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper every time we gather for divine service. In fact, that's what divine service means, uh, church with communion. Uh, not that you have to take it or partake of it every single time it's offered, but it should be offered. Uh, that takes a long time to teach that. That fell out of our practice many, many, many years ago, and it, once you lose something like that, it's very hard to get it back. Uh, but that does, uh, you know, these confessions that come from the Bible and uh, are written for our benefit uh, that we take our vows to uh, do say that we celebrate the Lord's Supper every time we gather and that it is also available whenever anybody asks for it. Uh, something to keep in mind. And we join together now in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you, give and increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring. Convert the unbelievers. Bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church. And show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church in the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you, so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. 
Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy, give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels. And for a strong help, be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. O God, who gave your Holy Spirit to the apostles, grant us that same spirit, that we may live in faith and abide in peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support among the wearisome changes of this world, and at life's end grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this night. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thank you.